Hello everyone and welcome to Isaac's Nature Channel Entomology. My name is Isaac and today I've got all my entomology stuff. So if you read the title, you may already know this. But today I will be covering the basics. Uh, the basic stuff that you need for an insect collection. Um, so yeah, let's start with the most essential thing, which is a net uh, for catching butterflies, catching flying insects. Uh, you can pick them with your hands. Um, but it's much easier with a net. You have more chance of catching them. Um, so yeah, this is a net that you use to catch in the air or something. I also have a net that you just go like this, zigzag patterns, in the grass. And I find that's the best method for catching ladybugs. Ladybugs and small insects like crickets, uh, grasshoppers. Maybe Katie did not, you know. Maybe not kitty dids. I've caught uh, some kitty dids by doing that. Um, so yeah, next thing you need is a pinning board. This one's really old. It's full of paint. It's all dilapidated. Look, I had to. I only have one, so I had to carve it so that the giant silk moths could fit and larger insects could fit. Uh, so yeah, spreading board for spreading your insects. Here I have my insect collection. Uh, you can see here, I just spread the insects, you can spread their wings, uh, usually you spread their legs, their antennae, like these. Um, here I've got a ground beetle, so it doesn't have any wings, but you can see this one has its elytras, which are those two things. So you got the elytras spread out, and yeah, you, it's almost, uh, if you want to have beautiful specimens who look like that, you probably need a springboard. I've seen people use um, just a, a foam board, a board made out of foam, uh, but for butterflies that's not practical because um, they'll just uh, the wings will be slanted downwards, and that's not really pretty. I've seen some people also so that the wings were backwards. They would just uh, they would flip the butterfly upside down. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't really do that. Yeah, I don't know why people would flip the butterfly upside down, unless you want the rear view. Anyway, um, so yeah, you also need pins. These are insect pins. Um, these are insect pins here. So here I have a here I have a box of insect pins. So these are oscillates insect pins. These are size zero zero, so they're the smaller pins. And it says it comes with a thousand pieces, but no, it did not. I just got two thousand pieces. There were uh, two thousand uh, two hundred pieces. They were just inside little uh, smaller packets. I just usually stuff the pins. or just uh, leave them on the board like this. But that's not practical. You can use a pin rack. I've actually got a list of stuff. I've got about thirty items that I bought um, online. I buy on the website Atelier Jean Paquet, uh, but they ship them from Quebec, so. If you don't live in Canada or close to Canada, it might take a long time because they ship it. I mean, I don't live in Quebec and they ship it over and it takes about two weeks. Um, anyway, that's where I get my pins and boards. I'm going to get about like 10 different boards, different sizes, so I don't have to cut them open like that. Uh, I'm also going to get adjustable board. I'll, I'll make a video about that. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, another essential is the uh, pinning board and insect pins. I've also got jars, jars for containing insects. Uh, this is, a, is a, this can be used as a killing jar. There are lots of ways to kill insects. I find that the most humane way is to inject them with ethyl acetate, or you can gas them with ethyl acetate, which will kill them, but not as fast. So I don't like doing that because then they suffer, and that's not fun. Killing insects uh, when they suffer isn't really fun. Um, you can also put them in a freezer. Um, I've heard that people boiled insects, boiled beetles. Um, I've never tried. Uh, I don't know what it would do. Um, yeah, I've also got here, this is labeled with insects. Uh, insect in French. And I, I'm going to put this in the freezer. So this will actually be a relaxing chamber. Usually relaxing chambers are larger for uh, butterflies. Like these. These are really large butterflies, you can see. Uh, so they wouldn't really fit in here. I use those for beetles. And it's important to label the jars. You don't want to surprise your roommates with um, uh, dead insects in a jar. Just open and 
find David's sake, that's not really fun. Alright, so, yeah. You've got your nets, pinning boards, and jars that you can use. Next thing are books. Uh, these are just butterflies and moth books. Uh, so yeah, I've got butterflies in Ontario and Eastern Canada. So I'm just going to go uh, see that real quick. So you got here all of the species. Uh, you got pictures, you got their descriptions. Yeah, I'm going to try to show you. So you got identification, wingspan, habitat and flight season, caterpillar, caterpillar plant food. You've got similar species and also called, so these are different words. This is the morning cloak, I mean Phallis antiopa. Uh, it's also it's also called um, Camberwell beauty, white petticoat, grand surprise, antiopa, spinny elm caterpillar, and yellow edge. So these are just different names. You got different categories. Here we have uh, emperors, you got fritillaries, uh, you got admirals. Brush footed butterflies, blues. My favorite, all the way up front, first things you see, uh, swallowtails. Uh, yeah, my favorite swallowtails, actually. Uh, it's a giant swallowtail. But it's not important. Uh, it's right here. I have one in my collection. Yeah, right here. Giant swallowtail. Uh, same thing with moths. This is a different book. Whoops, drop on the floor. Uh, so here you have uh, all the same thing, identification. Uh, so yeah, these are field guides. You can just go on the field if you want to identify insects. If you want to make a professional collection, it's important to identify your insects. Um, yeah, it's important to identify <laughs> your insects. Yet I don't do it at all. I've got all these specimens here, and they're not identified. I'm still looking for an uh, identification paper. I just cut up paper and write their name, but it takes so much time. So I'm probably going to do that in the winter time when I'm not collecting. So it gives me something to do all year, all year round for entomology. So yeah, then you've got your boxes uh, to store your insect. You can have these wooden boxes with glass, and you can have uh, Schmidt boxes. Uh, usually Schmidt boxes don't have glass, uh, they're just cardboard, but these are just my spare uh, butterflies. So I use them for storage as well. So yeah, these are pretty much the basic needs for uh, insect collecting. So yeah, you got nets, you got boxes, all the pins, all the essential stuff that you probably need. Uh, I've got some things that you need that I don't have, like uh, tweezers and different forceps for insects that could sting, such as wasps, um, some types of beetles, anything I can bite. Um, so yeah, I can use those also. Anyway, that's pretty much what I would do. Uh, these is what I would rate as the essentials for an insect collection. And yeah, that's about it. Anyways, be sure to subscribe if you have any friends who want to start a collection. Be sure to show them this video. And yeah, as always, I will see you in the next video. And yeah, goodbye.